Did you know that the Charleston Peninsula is separated into 14, yes, 14 distinct neighborhoods? Well, today, we're going to break down the differences of each and what they all offer. What's up and welcome back, everybody. My name is Bill Olson, your favorite Charleston YouTubing realtor. And today, we're going to be talking all about the 14 different neighborhoods that make up the Charleston Peninsula. Now, this is just going to be a brief overview so you can get a lay of the land. Now, as always, real quick, if this is your first time here or you haven't yet, please make sure you subscribe, like this video, ring the bell, share this with your friends, and leave a comment with your favorite neighborhood downtown. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started because we've got a lot of ground to cover. We're going to start with the most known neighborhood this is what everyone thinks of when they think of Charleston. This neighborhood is south of Broad. This is the south of Charleston you've seen on TV. There's the horse-drawn carriage tours, stately pre-Civil War homes, and of course, Rainbow Row. Located south of well, Broad Street, of course, if only these walls could talk, the stories they could tell. To really take a step back in time, Take a tour of one of the neighborhood's historic house museums. Some highlights are the Nathaniel Russell House, the Hayward Washington House, and my favorite, the 24,000 square foot Calhoun Mansion. When south of Broad, one thing you do have to check out is White Point Gardens, which is right at the tip of the peninsula with panoramic views of the Charleston Harbor. Next, we're going to head north to the French Quarter. The French Quarter is a small neighborhood on the southeastern corner of the peninsula. It's defined by Broad Street on the south, Meeting Street to the west, and Hassel Street to the north. The French Quarter gets its name from the high concentration of French Huguenots that settled in Charleston. The French Quarter is a good mix of residential living, shopping, dining, and sightseeing, and is extremely walkable for residents. Some of the most popular sites of Charleston are here, including the Charleston City Market, the Waterfront Park, which is home to the famous Pineapple Fountain, and the Old Exchange and Provost Dungeon. Also be sure to visit the Dock Street Theater when you're here. When it comes to churches, you'll find the sole French Huguenot Church in the United States, also St. Philip's Episcopal Church, and the Circular Congregational Church. The next stop on our tour is Harleston Village. Now, when most people see the name of this neighborhood for the first time, they wonder why Charleston is spelled wrong. I was the same way, but rest assured, it is Harleston Village and not Charleston Village, and it is one of the earliest and largest neighborhoods on the peninsula. It is located northwest of the south of Broad neighborhood, between Broad Street and Calhoun Street, and west of King Street. Located in Harleston Village is one of the oldest universities in the country, the College of Charleston. And it's not just old, it's also been named the most beautiful campus in the country on multiple occasions. Also make sure you take some time to stroll around Colonial Lake when in Harleston Village, a popular spot for locals to walk, run, and ride their bikes around. If you're more into the haunted history of Charleston, Charleston Village is home to one of the most haunted buildings in the city, the old jail on Magazine Street, which is available to tour by appointment, if you dare. Next, we have the King Street Historic District. Running right along King Street from Calhoun to Market is the main shopping area on the peninsula. This district features such high-end name brand boutiques as Kate Spade and Louis Vuitton, and also a great selection of local stores and restaurants. Be sure to head over to King Street for Second Sundays on King, where a stretch of the road is closed off to vehicles and pedestrians and shoppers are allowed to wander the streets, listening to live music while getting some shopping done and having a quick bite to eat. The few residential homes in the district are going to be smaller condo-style homes that are going to be above the businesses. Now, let's get into the boroughs. Some places you look are going to lump all these together and call them just the boroughs, but we're going to separate them for this video. First up is Radcliffe Borough. Located right in the center of the peninsula, Radcliffe Borough is just east of the Medical University of South Carolina. 
It spans from Rutledge Avenue to King Street, between Calhoun and Morris Streets. When living in Radcliffe Borough, you're only steps away from dining on King Street and the Farmer's Market at Marion Square. Among the single-family homes in the neighborhood, you'll also find several residence halls for the College of Charleston and the campus of Ashley Hall, Charleston's private all-girls school. Due to the proximity of King Street, the Medical University, and the College of Charleston, Radcliffe Borough is a highly sought-after area for medical professionals, undergraduates, law and professional students, and anyone looking to be centrally located in a convenient location on the peninsula. Just north of Radcliffe Borough is the joint neighborhoods of Cannon Borough and Elliott Borough. Running from President Street to Meeting Street and bordered by Morris Street to the south and the Crosstown to the north, these boroughs have seen quite the revitalization over the past years, with older homes being bought and renovated constantly. This neighborhood is home to some great locally owned dining and shopping, and also some of the best pizza in town can be found right here at D'Alessandro's Pizza, or Dow's as it's affectionately called by the locals. Other dining options here are Zhao Bao Biscuit, Bon Bon Mi, The Ordinary for some seafood and oysters, and for the vegetarians and vegans, Gnome Cafe is not to be missed. Next, we have Ansonboro. Located along the Charleston Harbor, Ansonboro is a very walkable neighborhood. While there are many single-family homes in this neighborhood, if you're looking for a condo, you'll find the best selection right here, with many right along the harbor. One of the peninsula's only grocery stores is located here, and that's the Harris Teeter at 290 East Bay Street. The two main attractions in Ansonboro are the South Carolina Aquarium, right at the end of Calhoun Street, and down from there is the Gilliard Center, Charleston's nonprofit performing arts center. Like most of the neighborhoods, there is no shortage of award-winning restaurants. The highlights in Ansonboro are Fig, Kaminsky's Dessert Cafe, and the Peninsula Grill, which is most famous for their 12-layer coconut cake. Next up, we have Mesa Ragsboro, or just Ragsboro because I've yet to figure out what the correct, the correct pronunciation is of that first part, and I probably just brutalized it. Just north of Ansboro, Ragsboro is defined by Calhoun Street, King Street, and Mary Street. If you've ever visited Charleston, you've most likely been in this neighborhood without even knowing it. This is the home of Marion Square, the site of the Charleston Farmer's Market. If you're not picking up fresh produce from the farmer's market to cook at home, be sure to grab a steak at Charleston's number one steakhouse, Hall's Chop House, located right here on King Street. And definitely don't miss their gospel brunch on Sundays. For a more casual bar atmosphere, head to the eastern edge of the neighborhood and hit up Bay Street Beer Garden. And if you're a history buff, this is the home of the Charleston Museum, founded in 1773. It is America's first museum. Up next, we have the East Side neighborhood, which stretches north from Ragsboro all the way to the foot of the Ravenel Bridge. The East Side has seen much revitalization over the past few years, with the biggest project being the Cigar Factory. A $30 million redevelopment of the structure began in 2014, and now it is filled with restaurants, salons, and an event venue. The East Side neighborhood is also home to the downtown location of my favorite restaurant, Taco Boy. Be sure to check out the nachos and the frozen screwdriver. It is a meal of champions. For the beer enthusiasts, be sure to head over to Palmetto Brewing Company, which was the first licensed brewery to open in South Carolina since the fall of Prohibition. Opposite the east side, we have the west side. The west side has seen a great resurgence recently. North of the crosstown on the west side of the peninsula, this neighborhood is home to Charleston's minor league baseball team, the River Dogs, who are co-owned by the one and only Bill Murray. Head over to Joseph P. Riley Baseball Stadium, or known to locals as The Joe, for fireworks every Friday during the season, a cold beer, and some of the best food you can get at a baseball game. If you're just looking to relax, on the other side of the Joe is Brittlebank Park overlooking the Ashley River. Bring the kids to play on the great play playground here and use up some of that energy. On the eastern side of the neighborhood, right on King Street, you're gonna find restaurants like Melfi's, 
Leon's, and don't miss the Recovery Room, the number one seller of 12 ounce PBR cans in the entire world for the past five years. Now, if you're looking for a more affordable place to live near the hustle and bustle of downtown, look no further than our next neighborhood, North Central. This neighborhood is experiencing a great residential revival, stretching from Congress Street all the way up to Mount Pleasant Street between Rutledge Avenue and I-26, you'll find mainly early to mid 20th century cottage style homes mixed in with newer, higher end apartments and condos. If you're looking for some of the best Carolina barbecue in town, look no further than Rodney Scott's Barbecue. This James Beard award-winning pitmaster serves up whole hog barbecue with all the fixins. If you're in the mood for a burger and some cold beer, check out a local's favorite, Moe's Crosstown. A smaller neighborhood that's to the southwest of North Central is Hampton Park Terrace. If you're looking for a neighborhood with more trees and green grass and less commotion, this is the place for you. This neighborhood is really only a handful of blocks west of Rutledge Avenue between Congress and Mary Murray Drive, in the center of which is Hampton Park, and at 60 acres, it's the largest park on the peninsula. Also in the Hampton Park Terrace neighborhood is the Citadel, which is the Military College of South Carolina. Just north of Hampton Park, we have Wagoner Terrace. You'll find that most of the neighborhood's homes were built in the 1920s through the 1960s, but since the early 2000s, there have been custom high-end upscale homes that have been built right on the Ashley River. Wagner Terrace is much more residential with a few businesses scattered throughout, but it's very convenient to everything the neck of the peninsula has to offer. The newest hotspot for local businesses is North Morrison, or NOMO for short, uh, formerly, this neighborhood was called East Central, and it runs between Morrison Drive and I-26, north of the Ravenel Bridge. Some of the peninsula's best new restaurants and breweries call North Morrison home, from award-winning barbecue joints like Lewis Barbecue and Home Team Barbecue, to the more eclectic fare of Edmunds Ost and The Butcher and the Bee. A can't-miss restaurant here is the Tattooed Moose, which was featured on Guy Fieri's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives for their Duck Comfy Club Sandwich. If you're a beer drinker like me, this is the southern part of the newly dubbed Charleston Brewery District, where you'll find my favorite brewery, Revelry, with their amazing rooftop patio, and their sister brewery, The Hold, right around the corner. North Morrison has a huge mix of commercial, residential, and industrial areas in the neighborhood, and it is definitely worth checking out. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you're looking for a home in these neighborhoods, I'm gonna drop a link to my website so you can see all the homes in each individual neighborhood. And please check out these other videos I have and subscribe to my channel, please and thank you. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye.